A few weeks ago, I finished building the entirety of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex from Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach in Minecraft. A lot of work was put into that build to make the map as functional and accurate to the game as possible, including all the playable arcade minigames. However, now that that project has all been completed, it is now time to take a step back and take a look at the original Five Nights games and see how I can build the locations in Minecraft and then make them functional, starting with the very first game. Before we get started with the build itself, there are a few things that I want to point out as this build is a little different than some of my previous projects. Projects. Unlike Security Breach which was made using the Unreal Engine, FNAF 1 is a click team game and is made up of pre-rendered images, meaning there is no way for me to fly around the location and take a look at it all in detail. This would not be such a problem if it wasn't for the fact that you cannot see the entire pizzeria while using cameras, meaning there are a lot of details that I could easily miss. So to work around this, I will also be using the location layout from FNAF VR Help Wanted, as well as some shots from the first game's trailer, just so that I can get a view of the FNAF 1 location in its 3D model. While the two games have slightly different looks to the build, it will still be useful to take a look at the places that are not shown off in the FNAF 1 cameras and add in some more features to the location. So with all the pre-build planning done, here is the outline that we have to work with for this location. You can pause the video if you'd like to use this video as a tutorial, but for the build itself, I think I have a really solid idea of how the place should look like. I've done a little bit of planning and messing around with different types of block palettes that should really work well for this build, and I also have some pretty cool ideas to try with the project overall, so hopefully this turns out in the way that I have planned. Now you might have noticed some things about the outlines that aren't actually in FNAF 1, such as the small room up here, which is where I thought it would be a good place to add the entrance to the building itself. For the kitchen, since we don't ever see this on camera, I decided to use the area from the Help Wanted Chiga Repair minigame and also expand upon it by adding more kitchen items to fill the rest of the room. Then there is also the safe room located just above this bathroom hallway here, which is going to be included in the build. However, what will not be making an appearance is the prize counter at this center part right here, as it doesn't actually make an appearance in FNAF 1 nor the FNAF 1 minigame in Help Wanted, it's just there in the lobby of the game. So with all preparations now set, there is only one final thing left to do, and get started with the build.
After about an hour of building, the main structure and exterior of the FNAF 1 location is now all completed. The interior is just as it's shown off in the first game, but the exterior had a lot of inspiration taken from the Five Nights Ride experience that was shown off a few years ago. You'll notice that I completely skipped over the iconic checkered pattern walls that are supposed to surround the entire pizzeria, and that was done intentionally, as it's something that I've never done before that I really want to share off in this video. This is the test world that I've made for this project. You can see that I've copied over the build from the main world over to this one, just so that I could mess around with different types of block palettes. Right in front of us you can see that there are six different types of floor decorations that I had planned for this project and of course we ended up going with this one right here which is a mix of polished diorite and a block of coal. However in front of it it's the wall textures that we are here to talk about right here. You can see there are three different designs that I used before we actually got started with the building. So the first one right here is the one that I would usually end up using where it's just a combination of black concrete and white concrete, two blocks on top of each other and just in this checker pattern right here. So I tried out this one block tall design which is a little bit better than this one however it doesn't have the checkered pattern that we want but it does have the three blocks of space that we could work with for other wall decorations. So the third design that I made right here is a little bit better where I actually used red terracotta as a base for the background and then alternated using different types of signs. You'll see that I've done this a bit in the past for different checkered patterns where for smaller scales I will end up using this technique right here where I just alternate birch signs and dark oak signs behind behind a different colored block. And out of all three of the designs that I have built here, I don't actually plan on using any of them, as if we take a look behind here, we can see the designs that we are going to be working with for this build. So here we have three different checkered pattern designs that are going to be put in the pizzeria. The first one right here is a checkered pattern with a red outline. The second one is the same, but with a black outline. And this third design right here is a smaller checkered pattern that is going to be used to put on the floor for the bathroom hallways. You probably noticed in the background of that last clip how I was able to do this and that is by using map art. You can see four giant squares along the ground here of each different textures that are going to be making up the different walls. So if I go ahead and go on top of one and open up a map you can see that we now have the wall texture that we want in our hand right here and then we were able to put it on an item frame and put it all along the building. In the past I've been against using this building technique however I really wanted to try new building methods and this is definitely something that I want to try more often especially because of the amount of detail that can be put into these maps. Back in the main pizzeria world, we're now going to add all of the map art that I just showed off in that test world, and we're going to add it on all of the walls throughout the entire building. However, once we're done with that, that isn't going to be the final detail that we add, as there is another really cool form of decoration which I have used in the past, and that is the use of custom player heads. And now that the final features have all been built in, this build is now fully completed, and I do really like the ending result that we have going on here, as I think I've done a really good and creative job at mixing vanilla Minecraft and some really creative features. As we take a look around, you'll notice where I used different map arts all around the pizzeria, with the main one being this one right here, with the red border around it. However, I did decide to change it up a bit, where you can see right here for the door frames, I have used a solid black texture, just so we could separate the two different arts in different rooms. Like here in the kitchen, you can see that I've used the smaller checker patterns along the floor. That same pattern carries over to the bathroom hallway, and even into the safe room here, where you can see it is all around the place. And then the final map art that I've used is up on the main stage, which is the default checker pattern with the black outline around it. All the custom player heads you see here are in fact still in vanilla Minecraft and are not part of any mod pack. If you're interested in how I've done all this, I will leave the link to the website that I use for these custom player heads in the description down below, just so you can go ahead and mess around with these for your own Minecraft builds. Now here's another interesting vanilla build feature that I've used, and that is the use of invisible item frames here to make it seem like this piece of paper has just been dropped on the floor. And this was done using this command right here, so it is all still in vanilla Minecraft. Once you give yourself this command, it will give yourself an item frame. However, if you were to place it on the floor, you can see that it is completely invisible. So whenever you put an item in it, it's just going to look like you've dropped that item on the floor. But with that, we now have the entire FNAF 1 location completely built in, as well as all the custom decorations all around the pizzeria. So now it's time for my favorite part of building, and let's add in some command blocks to take this build one step further and recreate the gameplay from the first FNAF game in this Minecraft world. To get started, the first thing I'd like to do is get the doors and the lights to be functional. So when we click this top button here, it's going to go ahead and activate this light just outside the doorway. So that way we can see if any animatronic is standing outside the office. Then of course the button underneath that is going to be the button that would theoretically close the door. And if we were to click it again, it would open back up, allowing us to stop the animatronic from wandering in the office and jump scaring us. And here you can see all the redstone behind it that makes both the doors and the lights work on both sides of the office. And it all starts with this command block right here 
here, which detects when the crimson button is being pressed, which is going to send an output into this toggle flip-flop here, which is going to send this item through the droppers and is going to either turn on the circuit or turn off the circuit, depending whether we want the door open or closed. Speaking of the door, you can see here that we have four miniature replications of the door frame from up above there in the main build, with each frame having a different state of its animation, with this one right here being when the door is fully open, and this one at the very end here when the door has been shut off completely. The exact same thing is being used on both sides of the office door here. You can see that this is the exact same circuit as used for that side of the office, except this time we just have it for the right side. Underneath the circuits for the door commands, we then have the circuit for the light switch, which works in the exact same way as the doors do. This command block sends an output to this toggle flip-flop right here, which will then determine whether the light outside the office is going to be turned on or off. So this is just a brief rundown of how these circuits work. However, if you are at all interested in how to make one of these doors for yourself, I do have a tutorial on the channel showing you how to make these doors for both the Java and Bedrock editions of Minecraft. So go ahead and give that video a watch if you would like. So to show off what this looks like in the office scenario, if we go ahead and click this button here, you can see that the light outside the office is now turned on. And if we go ahead and click it again, the light switch turns off. Then if we click this button right here, you can see that the office door closes. And if we click it again, you can see that it opens up in that really nice animation instead of just having the door appear and then disappear. So with this simple contraption now out the way with it's now time that we get to the interesting part, which I'm sure a lot of you have been thinking about, and that is the camera system that will allow us to look around the building to be able to find the different animatronics. And to be honest, I don't think this is going to be as difficult as you might think. So the way the camera system works is going to be made up of a contraption that looks a little bit like this. This is going to get expanded, however, the more cameras we add to the location. This is simply just the office mechanism that takes the player back to the office whenever they want to. So you can see right here, we have a piston with a redstone block at the end of it. And this piston is going to get activated as well as this command block right here once the night begins. So the night starts, a redstone block gets put right here and activates this repeating command block, which is going to kill at E type equals item. And that's because we are using items to be able to teleport all around the location. So whenever a player throws an item, then they're going to get taken to that area. So we don't want those items to be thrown all over the floor. So this command block just makes sure to get rid of them once they've been thrown. This piston right here is going to push this redstone block underneath this command block. And this command block is what actually teleports the player to the office once the night begins because we want the player to start in the office and not in some random camera. This redstone block then powers this repeater right here, which then goes into these two command blocks. This first one here is the one that actually gives the player an item. So you can see here, the item that we have chosen is gray die and its text name is office. So that way the player knows what they are actually selecting. So this command block is what is going to give the player the item. Then this repeating command block right here is the one that actually detects whether or not that item is in the player's inventory. So you can see right here, we have the gray die tag and its name is office. So once the command block detects that there is not a specific item in the inventory, it's then going to send an output, which would then turn on this redstone torch, which is then going to go ahead and teleport the player to that location. So if we go ahead and start this entire circuit, for example, let me go ahead and put the redstone block right here. You can see we get teleported to the office and we get the office item in our inventory. So I'm just going to go ahead and walk around. I'm going to fly to the other side of the location here and I'm going to go ahead and throw the office item and you can see that we get taken right back and you can notice that the item is not on the floor and that's because we have that one repeating command block that kills all items that have been thrown to the ground. So believe it or not, this is all that is required for the camera system. Of course, this is going to get expanded the more cameras we add in. This is just for the office segment, but we're going to have one of these strips for every single camera in the FNAF location. Now, what's the problem with this is that there are over 10 cameras in the FNAF 1 location and the player inventory is only limited to nine slots, meaning we are going to have to open up our inventory and throw some additional items in some other inventory slots. So that way we are able to take a look at every camera in the location. So with all slots now filled in, this is what the completed camera circuit looks like for the FNAF 1 location. You can see there are 12 independent slots for each one of the cameras, including the one that takes us back to the office. Let's go ahead and test it out. So if we flick this lever here, we're going to get taken to the office and we've been given a whole bunch of items in our inventory here. So if we go ahead and throw one, you can see that we are now taken to the main stage. We throw the next one and now we're looking at the main party room. So I'll just go ahead and throw them all just so you can see the camera angle from each one of the locations in the FNAF 1 building. Now, unfortunately, like I did mention just a little bit ago, we are only limited to nine inventory slots, meaning for the final three cameras, we're going to have to go ahead and open up our inventory and throw these cameras here. So if we go ahead and throw cam five, we are now in parts and service. We throw cam six, we have now been taken to the kitchen. And the last camera is cam seven,
moment where we take a look at the bathroom hallway. And now if we want to exit the camera, all we have to do is throw the office one and we've been taken back to the office. And now that we have both working cameras and doors, we can now go ahead and add power to both of these to limit how long a player can spend in the camera and how long the doors in the office can be closed. This build isn't going to be as challenging as some other ones. It's just going to be a simple timer mechanic as some items get filtered into these chests here. So we're going to have four different hoppers going down into chests and coming out of each one of these hoppers is going to be a comparator. So once we go ahead and put a stack of items in this hopper, you can see that it activates this comparator and also items have started funneling into this chest. Now, if we go ahead and put another stack of items into the second hopper, you can see that it's not actually going down and that's because it's still detecting that there are items inside of this hopper right here, stopping this one from going down. So we have a small timer right here that is slowly going to progress downward. So once the hopper has been emptied, we then want to send a signal out to a command block. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a comparator going out this way with a redstone torch in front of it and then a command block that will say how much power is left. So you can see that this redstone torch is now off and that's because this comparator is still activating it. So once it detects that there are no items left in this hopper, it's going to deactivate this comparator, which will activate this redstone torch, which will activate this this command block which will tell us how much power is remaining. So let's show off what this looks like as the power is going down. So if we remove this redstone block the items are going to start getting filtered into the chests. It is going down a lot quicker but this is just so that I can show off the different percents of power. So you can see it went down to 50% power. Next it's going to go down to 20% power and then finally at this command block it's going to show 0% power and that's where we would continue on where these two circuits stop working and then we would get Freddy in the left doorway and do the Toreador march. Now the last thing I need is adding is some set block commands. So every time the cameras are being used, it's going to set that block right there to a air block, meaning the redstone is going to go unpowered and then the items are going to get filtered down and it's going to slowly progress the power. However, once we return to the office, we want that redstone block to be added back so that way power isn't actually being drained once we're back in the security office. So now we want to do the exact same thing with the doors and lights. So every time the door is closed, it's going to remove the redstone block and every time the door is open, it's going to put down that redstone block so that way the power doesn't get drained. And we'll do the exact same thing with the lights here by putting those two command blocks right next to the other two. So now that we know that the power system works, I've now added in a second output to the 0% command that sends a output to the six command blocks here, which cut access to all the doors and lights and the camera system to make sure that the player cannot use any of their resources once the power in the building has been cut off. With the power now completed, I've then gone ahead and completed the time system. So that way the player knows what time it is as the night progresses. So it's the exact same system as the power system, except this time I've replaced all the command blocks to indicate what time it is all the way until 6 a.m here where you can see we get the 5 a.m symbol that pops up on the screen which then transitions to 6 a.m which will then let the player know that they have won the night you can see that it is the exact same setup as what we have over here except this time once the night starts this redstone block will be removed and will permanently be removed because unlike the power we want the time to be constantly going towards 6 a.m and cannot be stopped by the player a lot of command block and redstone work has been done to make this game functional however there's still one core gameplay mechanic that we still need to add in and that is the anime animatronics themselves. Let's go ahead and add in those and see how we can get them to work. Bonnie is going to be our test subject for this. So you can see that I have an armor stand with a custom player head on it and some dyed leather armor just to represent our Bonnie. So all around the map, you can see that I've already indicated where all of his path movements are going to be by using blue concrete all around the location just to show off where he's going to get teleported to throughout the whole place. So if we go ahead and take a look at how this works, you can see all the command blocks and all the redstone that go behind this. Now this looks really complicated, so I'm gonna try my best to explain how all of this works as simply as possible. It all starts with this circuit here. So at the start of the night, this redstone block is going to get removed. And once all of the items in this hopper have disappeared, it will activate this redstone torch, which will activate these two command blocks, which will then start the entire circuit here. So how we've made this work is that there isn't a set path for Bonnie to follow. Instead, he's going to have timed events where at a certain time in the game, he's going to go to one location or he's gonna to go to the other location. So you can see here that I have two labeled signs. So at the start, he's going to go to the main party room but once he's done in the main party room a few seconds later he's then either going to teleport to parts and service or he's going to teleport to the top of the hallway so we've done that for every single movement that bonnie has so once he teleports to the hallway top you can then go over here and this is where the hallway top segment starts so once he's at the top of the hallway he can either then go to the closet or he can go to the corner of the hallway just behind the door in the office now each one of these hoppers and chests are the timers that will actually start bonnie's movement 
pattern. So it's the same time as the design that we used for the power and time, except this time we need them to be replenished as we don't want Bonnie to do one cycle around the pizzeria and then stop completely. So these command blocks here are what are actually going to reset the timer itself by using this up here. So it's going to clone these two items. You can see that there's 10 stone items. So once the timer goes down, these command blocks will then reset this timer, allowing it to be used again in the future. Once all the items in the hopper are then in the chest, it will then activate this redstone torch, which will activate this dropper right here, which has two items in it, a stone block and a stone sword. So the way this works is one of those items is a stackable item and one of them isn't, meaning this comparator right here is going to send a different signal strength depending on what item it is in this hopper here, which will then give it the 50-50 chance of whether Bonnie is going to go say the party room or if he's going to go to the top of the hallway. Once Bonnie has made it to the office door, it's then going to start this circuit right here, which is going to be the jump scare and door mechanic. So the way this works is that this redstone block gets removed and of course all the items in the hopper get put into this chest. However, this time it's going to start two different circuits. So right here is a redstone torch, which is going to another timer. And this timer right here is what is going to start the jump scare. You can see right here, I just have a default jump scare for the time being. So what we need is the doors to be closed, which are then going to remove this redstone dust here, which will stop this from going down at all, stopping the jump scare from happening. So we need to cancel out the jump scare by closing the door. And then once we've done all that, we will then be able to teleport Bonnie back to the main stage so that way he can continue his cycle. I hope that I was able to explain this in a way that helps you understand how the animatronics path movement is going to be working for this map, as I do understand how redstone and command blocks especially can be very confusing, especially once we're doing something as complex as this. Now that I've shown you how this works, let's go ahead and see it in action. So let's remove this redstone block and now the cycle should begin. So let's just go ahead and see where he's going to teleport to. So the first position is right here in the main party room and from now it's where all the random stuff starts to kick in. So you can see he's now going down the hallway and can either go to the end of the hallway or the supply closet here. Let's see if he's going to make it to the doorway so we can test out the jump scare now. So there we go. He's now at the door and since the door isn't closed, we should get that timer that pops up and there you go. You can see that we got the boo text in the corner. Of course, it won't say that. We will get the whole jump scare mechanic set up. But you can see how Bonnie is going to work and in fact, how all the other animatronics are going to work by having a 50-50 chance of going from one place to another and just zip around the entire location. So it's going to be really fun checking the cameras, seeing where the animatronic is going to head to next. With Bonnie now complete, we can actually go ahead and copy this entire board here and paste it for Chica as both Bonnie and Chica have pretty much the exact same mechanics. All we will need to do is replace these command blocks to teleport in the positions where Chica would all around the pizzeria. But I'll go ahead and copy this design over for Chica so that way we can get the two main animatronics out the way with and then I'll go ahead and showcase what I've done for Freddy and Foxy. With that, we now have all four animatronic movements patterns built in and now this FNAF 1 recreation is now all completed. Chica's mechanic works in the same way as Bonnie's and Freddy and Foxy's timers both share the same design as the power mechanic as you must be on the cameras to be able to slow them down to stop them from jump scaring you. The jump scares for each one of the animatronics has also been added in which I will be showing off near the end of the video as well as the Freddy power out theme right here. So I have built a small segment of the Torridor March that will play when Freddy appears in the left hallway which will then trigger this sequence here where we get the flashing lights to recreate that scene from FNAF 1. And now after about a week of work this FNAF recreation is now all completed where not only have we built the first game's location, but also recreated a night of gameplay in Minecraft form. So now there is only one final thing left to do and see if we can survive a night of FNAF 1 in Minecraft. I hope you enjoy it and let's see how we do. All right, let's begin. So 12 a.m. the first night. There's of course only one night. However, I've put that for a bit more atmosphere. And here we go. We're now in the security office and the night has begun. So let's go ahead and check through the camera. So the main three are going to stay there for the time being and we're going to want to keep our focus on Foxy and Freddy as well as the night goes on. So we're going to want to check both start doors as well so that they don't sneak up on us as we are going through the cameras. You can see Chica and Bonnie are already in the main party room. So we're going to have to keep an eye on them as they go through the whole pizzeria. We also have those three cameras in our inventory that I'm going to have to remember to pay attention to just because, yeah, there you go. Bonnie is right there in parts and service. Just because they're not in our main hotbar doesn't mean we cannot see them. So Freddy's still there. No one's in the main party room anymore. It's 1 a.m. That's a good start. Don't know where they are though. Is Chica in the kitchen? I believe it's cam six. No, no clue where any of them are at now, honestly. So maybe the hallway somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. Chica's not there. And Bonnie is nowhere to be seen either. Bathroom hallway? No. 
kitchen. There we go. Chica is in the kitchen. 75% power. 1 a.m. Could do a bit better. However, we're going to have to keep an eye out on the cameras because we don't want them just appearing out of nowhere. And also, Foxy is going to be a big problem later on in the night. He arrives at around about 3 a.m. and Freddy around 4. So, I see Bonnie coming down the hallway. Yeah, there's Bonnie. Okay, 2 a.m. We got one more hour until Foxy starts to appearing. And then we really need to keep our eye out on him so that he doesn't get us. Bonnie's there. And Chica is nowhere. Oh, good. Yep, she's right there. Don't want to hit that map up right there. So Chica is right there. Where is Bonnie at right now? Is he still in the closet? Yeah, Bonnie is still in the closet. He's moved. Not at the door though. Is Chica at the door still? Chica is gone. So we can open that door up now. There we go. Okay, so Freddy is still there. And Chica is back on the main stage. Foxy hasn't moved yet because it's not 3 a.m. However, that is going to appear quite soon. Bonnie I saw at the hallway. Where is he at? Bonnie's at the corner. Okay, 3 a.m. Foxy's going to start appearing now, so we're going to have to keep our eye on that specific ca camera. And Bonnie, I believe, was at that corner. Yeah, Bonnie's right there. Is he at the door? No. Good. Okay, stay away from me, Bonnie, please. It is really random. Even though I made this mini game. it is still quite tense not knowing whether they're going to be at the doors or not while I'm flipping through the cameras. So I am going to constantly check back on the office just to make sure that none of them are right there. No one's there. All right, good. Foxy, how are you doing? Foxy still hasn't moved. That's good. We don't want him to move at all. However, we do need to conserve power as it did just hit 50%. So let's just wait a bit. 4 a.m. All right, let's go back. Yeah, Foxy's now moved. I probably should have checked the cameras a bit more then, even though power is running somewhat low. So Bonnie's at that hallway. That's fine, I guess, for the time being. Freddy is still on the main stage. No one is at our doors. That's good. Foxy is just about to start going to the office. And we may need to be pay a bit more attention. And Freddy's gone. Freddy's in the main party room. All right. We really need to keep our eye out on those cameras now. So, Foxy, I might actually close the door now just so that we're safe as I don't want to have to end up checking on them and it being way too late and he jump scares us. So, let's just keep that door closed for the time being. 5 a.m., the last hour. Where are Freddy and Chica? I have no clue. Is Chica in the... There's Freddy. Okay, Freddy's in the bathroom hallway. And Chica's in the kitchen. Okay, good to know. Where is Foxy? Foxy's gone. Okay. Where is he? Can we see him going down the hallway? I believe it is. No, we can't. We've missed him already. All right, that's fine. So we're going to have to keep that door closed until he returns. However, it is 5 a.m. So I think we should be fine. I'll go ahead and open up that door. Yeah, Bonnie's not there and Foxy is... Foxy's back in Pirate's Cove. Awesome. So we might just get this first try, actually. And now that Chica's there, I'm going to have to close that door now. Just as I say that, Chica appears at the doorway. However, I think... There we go. 6 a.m. So that wasn't too bad at all. We did get pretty close there at the end with Chica. But you can hit a 6 a.m. theme and we should get teleported back to that room. Even though I made this Minecraft recreation, it was still really tense not knowing where any of the animatronics were. And I was really uptight about whether the animatronic was going to be at the door while I was flipping through the cameras. So that was a lot of fun to do. I'm really proud of the ending result and I really do hope that you enjoyed that gameplay. Since we beat the night on our first try, we didn't actually get to see any of the animatronic jump scares, which is quite unfortunate as I did make sure to add those in just in case we were going to fail that night. So what I'll do before we finish up this video is I'll quickly now show you all four of the animatronic jump scares so that way you can get to see what those look like. With that ladies and gentlemen that is now going to wrap it up for today's video i hope that you enjoyed as it was a lot of fun putting this build together if you are interested in future projects of mine then be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you know next time i upload and you can help the channel to continue to grow but with all that being said thank you everyone so much for watching and i will of course see you in my next video